It's February 13, 2014. I'm here with Nina Mahmoud from uh, Fort Lauderdale. <clears throat> Nina, I'd like you to uh, first, could you introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're in Washington, D.C. today? My name is Nina Mahmoud and um, my father-in-law, Fatih Abu Sada, who lives in Alexandria, Egypt, is um, sick with liver cancer and he needs Nexavar. Um, unfortunately in Alexandria uh, and in Egypt a uh, two-week dose uh, is almost $1,800 um, and in a country where uh, people barely make uh, $100, uh, $200 a month. Uh, my father-in-law he makes um, a little less than $300 a month um, and he's not able to afford uh, Nexavar uh, to survive. Um, pretty much to this point, we've uh, the family has gone through their savings to pay for uh, Nexavar. Um, the next step is to uh, uh, sell uh, the family business, um, and even with selling the family business, it'll only pay for uh, nine more months of the drug. And it, uh, he has gone to numerous doctors. Um, and all of them, all of them have said that Nexavar is his only option, um, and if he uh, stops, um, he won't survive much longer. He started Nexavar in December of 2013, and since uh, December, his uh, lab values and uh, his tumors, his lab values have improved, and his tumors have shrunk. So he. Um, uh, he's having positive uh, results being on the drug, um, but unfortunately, uh, if, if he stops, uh, he, the doctors say he will not survive long after that. Could, could you tell me a little bit about why it is that, uh, I mean, uh, what you think sort of uh, could be done about this problem? Because, uh, you know, you're you say your father, uh, can you talk a little bit about the, the price of the drug in, in Egypt and, and what things you've done about, you know, either contacting the company or trying to find other sources of the drug, but your things you're trying to do right now to, to address this, uh, other than just come up with a lot of money uh, to pay for the drug. Um, well, we first researched uh, if, if uh, there were uh, if Nexavar was offered cheaper, uh, and it's not, the cheapest is, is what uh, we're currently paying, which is uh, 12,000 guinea, which equals to a little less than $1,800 uh, every two weeks um, for the drug, and that's, that's the cheapest uh, available in Egypt. Um, we have gone to the uh, Department of Health in Egypt, and they're not able to uh, help pay for it because of, of the cost. Uh, of the drug, um, we've um, I've researched uh, the Bear website because I do know that they have programs to help uh, people to pay uh, who need the drug. However, um, those options aren't available for people uh, in Egypt. Um, they're available for people in the United States. Um, I haven't found anything uh, for the international community. Um, I've researched uh, online uh, if it's available in, in different countries, and that's how I, I came across India. However, uh, it's difficult to export it out of India to Egypt uh, because of laws. Um, even if it's exported directly from India to directly to my father-in-law in Egypt, uh, it, it's still there's laws blocking that uh, from that happening. Um, we've gotten to the point uh, even if I hopped on a plane every month uh, to India and bought a bottle uh, and uh, took it to my father-in-law in Egypt, it would uh, still be 50% cheaper than buying it directly from the pharmacy in, in Egypt. Um, even if I did that on a monthly basis, it would still save us 50%, uh, be 50% cheaper to do it that way. So that's how I got to this point. Uh, before, you, you, you talked a little bit about uh, <clears throat> another story involving another uh, uh, person in Egypt that was taking the same drug, Nexavar, uh, for cancer. Could you, could you tell, talk a little bit about that story? 
Sure. Um, there was another gentleman um, uh, who was also diagnosed uh, with liver cancer, the same as my father-in-law, um, and he was a farmer. Uh, him and his son rushed to sell the family land, uh, the farm that had been in their uh, family for generations uh, and would have been passed down to the next generation. Uh, they rushed to sell it uh, so they could purchase the bottle of Nexavar. Uh, the process took you know, a little over a month. Um, they tried to sell it as fast as they could. Um, and before, uh, by the time they sold the land, the uh, gentleman had passed away. It, it was too late uh, for, for the farmer. They couldn't get the money in time to pay for the drug. And it's not available. It wasn't available to him otherwise unless he could come up with uh, $1,800 to pay for that bottle. And uh, as I mentioned, that's the point that we're at now. Um, you know, uh, going through savings and asking uh, family members t t if they can donate uh, money. Uh, my father-in-law is living, you know, two weeks uh, uh, bottle to bottle, uh, trying to get that next bottle uh, for $1,800. And we've gone through the savings and now it's um, come to the point of uh, selling the family business and even after selling the family business um, that again has been in the family for a long time and is supposed to be uh, passed down to the next generation of sons, um, if they sell the family business uh, to purchase Nexavar, um, it would only supply him with nine months of Nexavar. Uh, <coughs> you're, you're the, um, the daughter-in-law. Could, could you talk a little bit about how this uh, is affecting your, your husband? Um, my husband is the oldest son. Uh, him and I are both U.S. citizens. We live here with our two children. Um, it, it's been difficult for him because his father has always been the uh, nucleus of the family, has always been very strong, and um, you know is a loving, caring, hardworking man. And to see him uh, uh, not have uh, the ability to fix this problem, you know, every avenue that we've we've have tried to take to see if we can get the medication or to see if there's are any other options, uh, we come to a dead end. Um, and and every time we've reached out to uh, different agencies to see what's the possibility of them helping, um, again we come to an, a dead end. Everything comes uh, down to the price of Nexavar. Um, and it's been difficult for him because, you know, he is the oldest son um, and, uh, you know, him and his other siblings, it, it's been difficult to know that if, if they don't do something, if they can't get that drug that, you know, you're putting an expiration date on, on, um, on your father and you're uh, letting him die and you don't, your hands are completely tied. Um, and I've, I've... Uh, I've said that it's it's like watching a, a loved one drowning. You know, you see them drowning, and in, in there is a life vest available, but you're not able. You can't throw it out to them to save them, and you just have to stand there and and, and watch them die. And it's not that there isn't something available; it's that you, you just don't have access to it, and it's all because of price. Um, and I've also said that you know, cancer doesn't discriminate. Um, so why is the drug company discriminating by uh, pricing this drug so high um, and only uh, so only a, a, a handful of people have access to it? Tomorrow you're going to have the possibility of meeting the one of the top officials, if not the top official for Bayer in the United States of America at the, at the hearing that the United States International Trade Commission is holding about India, where, where <clears throat> the patent policy on this drug is, is one of the topics we're going to talk about. If you have the opportunity uh, to meet this gentleman, uh, the Bayer executive, what, what, would you, what, what do you int intend to say to him? Um, if, you know, Bayer really is, believes uh, in their mission statement and their values, then uh, allow this drug 
uh, to be accessible to uh, everyone. Um, we're not asking for them to give it to us um, or for a handout. We're only asking that um, the price of the drug is um, is at a price point that we can afford. Um, you know, this cancer doesn't discriminate, so you know they they shouldn't discriminate either by pricing this drug so high. And you know, my personal mission is, of course, to get this drug to my uh, father-in-law. But my overall mission is to make it accessible for, you know, everybody else's uh, father and mothers and sisters and brothers who are also um, suffering from liver cancer and, and needing uh, Nexavar. Um, allow them the opportunity uh, to survive and not needlessly die. Um, you know, it's 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 one thing to have a disease that there is uh, there isn't a drug that can uh, help. Uh, help, but we have something. Bear has something, and, and to only a allow us a handful of people, or make it accessible to a handful of people, um, isn't right. I mean, they're not right. That's not right to do that. So if they believe in their mission statement and their um, values uh, that they have posted uh, all over their website and that they express and preach, um, then make it accessible to every person in the world. I just like to. Uh, I mean, when you found out that this drug that's almost a thousand dollars a week in Egypt is available at um, uh, between twenty-five and thirty-five dollars a week in India, the first first part of the question I'd like to ask you is: is how did that make you feel when you when you when you learned about that? And secondly, um, what will happen to your your father-in-law if he stops taking the drug? Um, when I found out that this uh, that Nexavar is available in India um, for a much cheaper price, um, I was excited. I, I felt like, you know, uh, um, it was a break. It was, it was finally we, we could get access to the, to this to Nexavar. Um, it, it was at that moment. It's like, okay, well, how do I get to India and 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 get the drug? It can is there a way to get it from India to Egypt? It was. It was uh, a relief um, um, that, that that this drug is available um, for a price that's that's affordable uh, to the to our family. Um, I apologize. What was the second question? Well, I want to ask you, uh, what's going to happen to your father if he stops taking the drug? And the second, another question I want to ask you is. The point of this hearing that's taking place is to put pressure on India so they stop making cheap generic versions of cancer drugs. And as a U.S. citizen, how does that make you feel, that that's what the United States government is trying to do in this hearing? If um, my father-in-law stops taking Exavar, he will die. Um, he his he has improved since uh, starting Nexavar. Um, his lab values and uh, has improved, and the tumors have uh, shrunk. Um, and we've asked the doctors, can he come off of it? Then, and they have all said no, because the moment that he does, he is not going to survive. Um, he, the only reason he has survived this long is because of this drug. Um, it's disgusting that. Uh, there is something available to help people who are um, dying uh, from cancer. Um, and it's disgusting that the U.S. government, um, that any government, um, would try to stop uh, India from making this drug uh, available to the people who need it uh, at a price point that they can better afford uh, than what is currently being offered by Bayer. So as a U.S. citizen, as um, an Egyptian, as a human being on this planet, I am completely and 100% disgusted because it, it's not uh, somebody somewhere far, far away um, 
it's my family, uh, it's my father-in-law, it's my husband's father, and it's my children's grandfather. Um, and if, if, if there's something available, it should be available to people who need it, not the people who can only afford it. It's been reported in the press, including a, a story recently by Gardner Harris in the New York Times, that the President of the United States, President Obama, uh, Joe Biden, the Vice President of the United States, the head of the United States Trade Representative Office, uh, Michael Froman, uh, and in other reports, uh, the head of the U.S. Patent Office and the Secretary of Commerce have all lobbied the Indian government at very high levels to object to the compulsory license on Nexavar. One, I'm not sure, I just wanted to, had, were you aware of that, and, 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 and does that surprise you or, or disappoint you? It does surprise me, and it's very disappointing. Um, uh, I, I'm learning a lot of information um, in, in the past week, um, and especially with uh, Obamacare. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that my president, the person that I voted for twice, um, it, 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 that that's that that's happening. I'm, I was very surprised to hear that, and I'm I'm honestly disappointed, and it makes me really sad. You could speak directly to President Obama about our trade policy toward India and the uh, making available to the world generic cancer drugs. What would you say to him? I would say that this is not about money. This is not about politics. Um, this is a, 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 a life prolonging drug. Um, you, cancer does not discriminate. Uh, it does not say that you can afford to have cancer so you're going to get it. it, it um, so if cancer doesn't discriminate, then the U.S. government should not allow uh, Bayer to discriminate and they should not stop uh, India from providing a generic version of this drug uh, for, except for people who need it to have access to. Thank you very much. Before I turn off the camera, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, you know, this is my father-in-law, um, and uh, a lot of time people are disconnected to things that are happening overseas, and it, it's it's when it's not happening directly to us, we forget, um, and and we're very blessed in the United States. Um, you know that we have access to many things, um, but many Americans, uh, their families are from other countries. Uh, my family is in Egypt. Uh, I have friends who their family is in uh, India. So it's not uh, an Indian problem, and it's not an Egyptian problem, it's a world problem. So when you uh, cut off access to people in other countries, it's affecting people here in the United States too because again it's it's our family um, that it's impacting um, so you know you, you see somebody or you hear about a different country and you, you forget that um, human connection or, or you don't it, it, it doesn't uh, you don't have that human connection because you don't know that person but it's likely that you know somebody that's in the same room that has a family member that's overseas that it is impacting and think of it as if it was uh, your family member um, if it was your father if it was your mother if it was your child um, or if it was one day you um, who needed access to something um, and a government um, or a company is preventing you from getting it um, you can't put a price on life. Life, you know, time is, uh, you know, a commodity that it, you, you cannot ever put a price on and, and they shouldn't put a price uh, on uh, a drug that could help prolong life um, and help somebody who really needs it. So I just hope that uh, Bayer and uh, the U.S. government um, really takes that into consideration.